Over the course of the last weeks, we have spoken on risk matters about technology, especially AI, and the importance that it plays in the broader economy and more particular in the compliance sector. Today, we will be more specific and discuss the application of AI in compliance and why off-the-shelf AI engines are unlikely to properly serve the compliance sector and propose which AI model could help compliance officers better do their work. While AI is changing the way people do business, adoption by companies, and more specifically compliance, has been slow and somewhat cumbersome. If 2024 was the planning year for AI, meaning that it was the year when firms studied AI and got to understand its basic elements, then 2025 was the testing year. It was the first year when a large number of consumers started using AI for the first time and began to familiarize themselves with the technology. But within 2025, AI did not fully find its way into compliance functions. AI is a new technology, much like computers were in the 1970s and the internet was in the early 1990s. And there is a learning process as people try to figure out what exactly this new technology is and how they can best leverage it. There is hype, meaning that some people may think that everything will change almost overnight with this new amazing technology until they come to the point where reality hits. This is the point when people realize that the adoption of AI is a marathon and not a sprint, and that AI cannot provide the right answers to everything that is asked, at least not in the models that are used in their current form. So if 2025 was the year of hype, then probably 2026 will be a year of deeper understanding, when firms really focus on what AI should look like within their company. That means that they need to understand how exactly AI will be used in specific areas of their business and what type of AI needs to be employed. Now, your large generative AI providers, such as OpenAI and their main product, ChatGPT, Gemini, DeepSeek, Perplexity, to name a few, use what are known as large language models, meaning that they digest massive amounts of data as they quote-unquote scrape the internet to find information to answer questions based on user prompting. And since the information ingested by the LLMs is vastly unregulated, that information contains unreliable sources that may result in the AI model responding with totally inaccurate information. Or in many cases, users may get lots of information and somewhere within that volume or that large volume of information, they may find the answers, but it's not typically extremely specific. This is again the weakness of LLMs because they have access to so much information that they sometimes struggle to give you exactly what you need within a small number of prompts. In some cases, AI models suffer from what is known as hallucination, meaning that they may not be able to answer certain questions and they venture a guess, and you end up with the wrong or biased answer, quoting non-existent sources. Now, notice how polite these tools are. They say, great question, and almost sound like a friend who is always eager to help, even if they are unable to. They have to answer the question somehow and mimic a human. And that's where some of the problems lie. When it comes to compliance, however, you need very accurate answers because you are accountable to your firm and to the regulator, and that is why LLMs, generic LLMs at least, can be inadequate. So as firms, especially in the regulated areas, start seeking specificity and accuracy, they should increasingly turn to SLMs, which are small language models. Now, let's look at the basic differences between LLMs and SLMs. According to technology company Red Hat, which is now part of IBM, these are the differences, and I quote, SLMs and LLMs are both types of artificial intelligence systems that are trained to interpret human language, including programming languages. The key differences between LLMs and SLMs are usually the size of the data sets they're trained on and the different processes used to train them, to train them on those data sets and the cost benefit of getting started for different cases. And that's where the quote ends. So in short, LLMs are designed to give you answers to all of your questions across multiple areas, whereas SLMs, properly designed, have a better chance of giving you what you need in a particular area. LLMs are great for general searches in areas that you do not know much about, and so you want to get a large volume of information that you will go through in order to get an understanding of the issue. But for compliance work, what is probably most valuable is an SLM, because compliance needs specific answers based on what the regulations say and not matters of opinion or providing multiple views on some issue. These SLM tools, however, are not easy to construct properly. 
They need libraries of trusted sources and reliable data that are designed by experts who understand the regulations themselves and how all of these fit together. And the model itself needs proper rules and logic to function effectively from a user and technology perspective. These models must be tested by professional compliance officers to also ensure that they are properly geared towards the day-to-day -to -day needs of compliance users. And most of all, users must trust that the results they get from these models are accurate and can stand regulatory scrutiny. Now, we will have a lot more to say about this as we will soon announce the launch of an exciting new technology uh, product, a compliance technology uh, product in the AI space. But we want to first provide the baseline for why it is important going forward to have bespoke tools for compliance officers. Because we know very well how firms can get into trouble if they cite sources that are not accurate. We will discuss more in the coming days, including offering free subscriptions to this new technology. So please hit the subscribe button and enable notifications. Thank you.